हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द चैनल एंड वेरी वेलकम टू दिस प्ले लिस्ट इन विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग मैथमेटिकल ऑपरेशन विच आर परफॉर्म ऑन सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम्स सो फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग वी हैव सीन अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स टिल नाउ वी हैव सीन डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन मैथमेटिकल ऑपरेशन विच आर परफॉर्म ऑन डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ डिफरेंट सिग्नल्स we have seen lti systems we have seen ctlti dtlti systems we have seen convolution we have seen properties of convolution for the integral and summation both so uh, and after that we have seen um, uh, the properties from uh, the uh, point of view of impulse response as well right we have also seen the uh, uh, connections of the system cascading connections of different systems so up until now whatever we have seen uh, and uh, by mean whatever we have seen by mean i mean the last lecture the very previous lecture we were discussing about uh, uh, discrete time signal only right uh not only signals but systems as well and the linear shift invariant systems only which means um LTI systems basically. So today we are going to um, discuss about different equations, which, which is an um, uh, you can call efficient way to implement discrete time systems. So we already know what is the convolution of uh, uh, a signal with its unit sample response. Let's say signal is x of k uh, or x of n, and uh, unit sample response is h of n. We have seen it in previous classes, right? So uh, again, to give you a glimpse, uh, let me give you a glimpse when we discussed it. Right, this is the formula which we used. Y of n is equals to minus infinity to infinity x of uh, x of k h of n minus k. and when we saw the properties of uh, uh, convolution sum we uh, found out that we can also write this formula as h of k x of n minus k right so we can interchange them and uh, then in very uh, last lecture when we discussed about uh, uh, causality and stability of a system uh, at that time we found out that uh, uh what is the condition for a system to be a causal system and in that we have discovered that uh, for a system to be a causal system your unit sample response must be equal to 0 for all the values of uh, n less than 0 so here this equation which was giving the condition for causality and uh, based on that we found uh, found what will be the output of uh, my causal system so uh, instead the integral when uh, not integral the summation which was going from uh, minus infinity to infinity now only goes till zero to infinity as you can see here y of n is equals to k equals to uh, zero to infinity h of k x of n minus k right so this equation which we have just circled round Uh, or you can call it three point three point three in from this picture. So this equation is uh, obtained by putting your causality condition in uh, the uh, condition or the equation for the convolution of your uh, whole summation. So based on that, uh, two types of systems are possible. depending on this and uh, uh, we are going to define them we are going to discuss about them in this lecture so if you have uh, not seen the previous lecture or if you want to know more about the causality and stability of uh, uh, ctlti system dtlti system so the link of previous lecture will be flashing on the i button which is on the top right hand side corner of your screen so you can click on it and you can watch it and if you have already seen it let's move further and let's see the system analysis from different equation model so now continuing that discussion which i was just doing few seconds ago right 
so in that equation of uh, causality let me uh, quickly go back to that uh, in this equation of causality when we were going here uh, when we were going 0 to infinite uh, we stated that this system is causal system right the LTI system is causal system because uh, if my system is causal then only my system can um, my system will hold this um, property of convolution right uh, this only uh, my convolution summation will go from 0 to infinity so what does it means it means h of k this h of k will be 0 for all the values of k less than 0 agreed but if the value of my h of k uh, what will be what will happen to value of my h of k when value of k will be greater than that what will be uh, the value of my h of k when the value of k will be greater than m right so the value will be uh, if h of k will be 0 for k greater than m you can write the same equation with this formula you can represent it by this formula right so instead of going from 0 to infinity now we will go till 0 to m minus 1 only and uh, h of k will remain as it is x of n minus k will again remain as it is so please observe the, the unit sample response h of k is uh, non-zero for all the values of k uh, for uh, is non-zero for all for all uh, k is equals to 0 to m minus 1 okay all the values from k equals to 0 to m minus 1 and uh, because of that uh, there are finite number of terms in my unit sample response right it will there is there ain't no way that it will go from uh, it will go till infinity right so the number of terms will be finite and if the number of terms will be finite then what uh, what will be these terms so these terms will be c it will be um, first value of 0 which means h of 0 then h of 1 h of 2 up to up to h of m minus 1 it will go right which means how many terms you will get because you are going from uh, h of 0 to h of m minus 1 the number of terms you will be getting will be m terms right because you are going from 0 to m minus 1 so the sum, uh, sum will be m terms so the system for which this uh, unit sample response will have finite number of terms these systems are called finite impulse response systems or in short FIR systems and the output of such FIR system will be given by uh, this equation y of n is equals to k is equals to z uh, y of n is equals to summation k is equals to 0 to m minus 1 h of k x of n minus k and when you expand this equation what you will get will look something like this so we did nothing here instead of uh, h of k we started take uh, we started with k is equals to 0 so we got h of 0 x of n then we put k equal to 1 so h of 1 x of n minus 1 then k equal to 2 h of 2 k, k equal uh, h of 2 x of uh, n minus 2 till uh, till k is equals to m minus 1 so we will get h of m minus 1 x of n minus m minus 1 so in bracket it minus minus will be plus so we will get x of n minus m plus 1 right so what is output here um, output is my yn and what is yn so yn is equal to the weighted sum of my uh, sum of my input samples which are um, xn x of n minus 1 x of n minus 2 up to up to x of n minus m plus 1 and these input samples are the most recent m samples right and because of that the fir system has to has to store all the inputs values from x of n minus 1 x of n minus 2 up to up to x of n minus m minus 1 so it has to store all the previous values all the uh, number of input samples in its memory itself so that is your finite impulse response now let's quickly uh, see what is infinite uh, impulse uh, impulse response or in short 
called IIR systems. So again, uh, when we consider the equation y is equals to n k equals to uh, summation k is equals to 0 to infinity h of k and, uh, x of n minus k the convolution uh, general convolution equation we again are considering that causal LTI system is given here and because uh, I'm talking about the causal LTI system which means uh, for all the values of k less than 0 h of k will be 0 right now uh, if such thing happens if uh, for all the values of k less than 0 my value of h of k becomes 0 then uh, when the value of uh, h of k will be non-zero so h of k will be non-zero for all the values of k greater than 0 right because uh, the value uh, for the, all the values of k less than 0 h of k is 0 so in case of uh, k greater than 0 the value of h of k will be non-zero so uh, that means that uh, the values of h0 h1 h2 up to up to h infinity all these terms will be non-zero terms right they will hold some values and because of that what is happening the uh, computation for output my output is y of n by the way so uh, will become very uh, very long right because we have to consider all the values for uh, uh, k is equals to 0 to k is equals to infinity for the calculation of h of k which means the number of terms which we will be getting in h of k's calculation will be infinite in finite impulse response we had how many number of terms we had m number of terms but here we are getting infinite number of terms and uh, when we will get this infinite number of terms uh, the system for which uh, uh, such infinite number of uh, mm, terms or unit sample responses response terms are considered such system will be called infinite impulse response system or IIR systems and uh, same as FIR systems when you expand this equation you put uh, k is equals to 0 in this equation first so you will get h of 0 x, uh, x of n plus h, uh, h of 1 x of n minus 1 plus up to up to h of infinite into uh, x of n minus infinite so it will go to the infinite right so now what is this equation shows so the equation uh, shows that the computation of my output y of n will involve the use of x of n and all the past inputs right the x of n which is my present input and all the past inputs x of n minus 1 x of n minus 2 up to up to x of n minus infinity right so the memory required to store all those uh, uh, all those inputs will be too much right and you must need uh, uh, you must need those values so you have must uh, store those uh, values in your memory somewhere right but ideally uh, x of n x of n minus 1 up to up to x of infinity are infinite number of inputs which are uh, required to be used for the computation and uh, uh, you must need to store it so what does it mean it means it simply means my IIR system requires infinite memory and because it is requiring infinite memory because uh, uh, we are uh, we just said it requires infinite memory because it is requiring infinite memory this system is practically not possible right because the, there is no such thing as infinite memory right there is uh, or there will always be a limit of your memory so uh, such IIR systems are implemented with the help of uh, difference equations and uh, such implementations are very efficient in terms of computation uh, and memory requirement but uh, uh, always remember IIR system requires infinite memory right so uh, infinite memory is not practically possible uh, there is one more thing uh, in both FIR and IIR systems uh, the computation will become very inefficient when the number of M will become very large uh, uh, in uh, FIR systems I mean because uh, in IIR you are getting infinite memory but in FIR systems the computation will become very inefficient when the number M will be large because you will have to calculate so many things 
so uh, that's your infinite uh, impulse response now uh, let's come to the third type of system which i want to discuss non recursive systems so um let's let's try to test a few of um, your memory uh, neurons so when the output y of n of the system will depend on present and past inputs only then such system will be called non recursive systems does that ring any bells if it does then congratulations you are uh, following this channel and you are following this uh, lecture series consistently and uh, you are paying enough attention to notice the details because it is nothing but the def it is nothing but definition of my system to be a causal system and uh, we are having almost equal or same definition for non recursive system as well which says uh, the output y of n of system will depend on present and past inputs and uh, if such thing happens then my system will be called non recursive system and uh, it can be represented by uh, this third formula which i have shown here y of n is equals to f f of x n x of n minus 1 up to up to x of n minus m i will tell you what is f here no need to worry uh this f denotes the function of the quantity contained within the bracket so it is function of uh x of n x of n minus 1 up to up to x of n minus m and we know that uh, the output of my causal fir system will be uh this y of n is equals to k equal to 0 to m h of k x of n minus k we just saw a minute ago right we just saw it, uh, saw it in the previous slides so that will be my the output and uh, now uh, we did just one small thing instead of taking uh, m number of uh, samples uh, what did we do we consider m plus one terms of unit sample response right here what did we do we considered m number of samples but here what we are doing we are taking m plus one number of samples uh, or rather we we call we will call it m plus 1 number of terms of uh, unit sample response so what will happen uh the um the system uh, the uh, causal fir system uh for this system the value of h of n will be non zero for all the values all the values of n which are between 0 to m right the value of h of n will be non zero for uh, this integral uh, or this summation from 0 to m will be non zero and uh, except for that it will be zero so uh, when you expand this equation it will look something like this uh, we will get y of n is equals to uh, put zero here so h of 0 x of n Put one here plus h of one x of n minus one plus up to up to put m here so we will get h of m x of n minus m and uh, when we do that uh, this will be my expanded uh, equation and uh, in this uh, this equation as well uh, y of n is the function of uh, present and past input samples only as you can see. we are having uh, uh, present and past inputs uh, x of n is my present input x of n minus 1 n minus 2 up to n minus m all of the them are past inputs so uh, this is a non recursive system right because y of n is the function of present and past in input samples and because of that the causal lti fir system will be defined by the linear convolution right the causal uh, lti fir system defined by the linear convolution are basically non recursive systems so it is as simple as that all the causal lti systems which are defined by linear convolution will be non recursive system that is a compulsion right and uh, uh, these systems do not use any feedback mm, you must have figured out till here because it is non recursive so basically it means there is no feedback so it does not uh, uses any feedback from output because it is uh, completely depending on previous inputs only right 
I haven't mentioned about any anything about previous outputs here. So there is no feedback. And uh, uh, M is the number of past input samples in the memory, which means again, uh, if number of M will be large, then uh, there will be trouble. Computation will become inefficient and difficult. And uh, uh, that was for uh, for uh, uh, FIR systems. But uh, if we consider for uh, uh, non-FIR systems or IIR systems, what will happen? Uh, this time convolution equation will be, uh, the summation in the convolution equation will go from 0 to infinity. In finite, we were going from 0 to m. Now we will go from 0 to infinity. And when we do that, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, represent represent it this way when we expand that equation and uh, the change here will be in um, in uh, uh, finite LTI system we were getting this term h of m and x of n minus m but for uh, II, IIR systems what will happen we will be getting h of infinity and x of n minus infinity here right so um, we can write y of n is equals to f of xn xn minus 1 xn minus 2 till x of infinity and here we were going till x of n minus m but now we are going till x of infinity for uh, my iir systems right right so that is showing that the uh, non uh, non recursive element of my iir system the input samples are to be stored in the memory again because input systems are uh, need to be stored in memory and uh, uh, as you need to store memory somewhere it requires infinite memory which means this is also practically impossible so the implementation of causal IIR system is not possible because uh, uh, not possible in only uh, non recursive form because uh, what is happening here we are uh, uh, not uh, there is no way we can uh, have a practically infinite system, right? Uh, a system which can uh, store infinite amount of memory, right? So it's practically impossible. Now, after uh, seeing non-recursive, let's come to recursive systems. So again, um, let's take uh, an equation. Uh, let's take output of y of n of system, which is depending on the present and past inputs listen carefully the output y of n of my system is depending on present and past input as well as past output of my system so such system will be called recursive system so the output is not only depending on present and past inputs but it is also depending on the past output so the causal FIR and IIR LTI systems uh, can be effectively or efficiently implemented using this recursive systems and uh, uh, this recursive systems are also very efficient in terms of memory requirement and computation because uh, you don't need infinite memory here right like non-recursive systems so let's consider a system which is basically a non-recursive system and uh, uh, as it is a non-recursive systems we can uh, take y of n is equals to summation of k equals to 0 to n and x of k h of n minus k but uh, here what we will do we will consider h of n minus k is equals to 1 for all the terms in existence so what will happen my sister uh, my equation will will be cut uh, cut down to this y of n is equals to k is equals to 0 uh, y is equals to uh, summation k is equals to 0 to n x of k and the value of h of n minus k is 1 for all the terms and when we try to expand it right when we try to expand it for all of uh, all of the terms for all the values of n uh, values of n we will get something like this see first we took n is equals to 0 so y of 0 will become k uh, summation k is equals to 0 to 0 x of k which means uh, x of 0 
when we put n is equals to 1 what we will get y of 1 is equals to summation k equal to 0 to 1 x of k and x of k will be equal to x of 0 right uh, initially x of 0 plus x of 1 but see what is the value of x of 0 x of 0 is equal to y of 0 which means it will be equal to y of 0 plus x of 1 now see what is y of 0 y of 0 is actually the previous output so here your uh, output present output is depending on previous output and present input right same thing let's do it let's take n equal to 2 what will happen my x of k will be equal to x of 0 plus x of 1 plus x of 2 now what is uh, x of 0 plus x of 1 it is actually y of 1 right so y of 1 plus x of 2 which means it is again depending on previous output plus the present input same thing with n equal to 3 you will get y of 3 is equals to x of 1 plus x of 2 plus x of 3 plus x of 0 again this first three terms will be the same as here so it is nothing but y of 2 plus x of 3 which means again the past output and present input and same will go till uh, uh, n is equals to n minus 1 and n is equals to n right so uh, when you uh, understand that uh, the method or the pattern which is being followed here you can write this equation like this y of n is equals to y of n minus 1 plus x of n so what is y of n minus 1 it is my previous output and what is x of n it is my present input and that is what pretty much happening here right see here for y is equals to 3 uh, we had y of 2 which was my previous output plus x of 3 which is my present input same previous output present input for y is equals to 2 for y is equals to 1 previous output present input for y is equals to 0 there is no previous output so plus 0 and present input x of 0 right so that is what happening here and uh, coming back to our point here uh, y of n minus 1 is the previous output in uh, this equation which I will uh, mention here as well so y of n minus 1 is my previous output and the present in output is y of n which is calculated using the previous output y of n minus 1 and my present input x of n right and that's what makes my system a recursive system so in this recursive system the previous outputs are used to calculate next uh, next outputs and uh, uh, that can be uh, seen from uh, this diagram here the mo uh, first diagram on the left side uh, left hand side right so uh, observe that the feedback is uh, present since this system is a recursive system so the system needs only one memory location to store the previous output right only one after you uh, use that uh, uh, output then you don't have to store it you can basically delete it and the uh, current input will become the previous output right so uh, in this one this uh, in this uh, uh, figure the z inverse block as you can see here it is indicating the delay of one sample and uh, there is only one addition as you can see we are having uh, y of n minus 1 plus x of n so in uh, all the previous uh, systems we saw we were taking uh, so many number of additions and uh, uh, basically in non recursive systems we were taking so many number of additions and here we don't need them so uh, we also don't need to save all the previous outputs or the previous inputs as well so uh, the requirement of memory in such system what will happen will be very less right it will only increase as n increases and uh, because of that the recursive systems are very efficient in terms of memory and computation because you don't need so many so much memory right you don't need to store uh, unnecessary data so the iir systems are also converted in the recursive system uh, in order to make the implementation part very easy right because you don't have uh, infinite memory basically so uh, uh, 
uh, now come to this figure the second figure see it it basically shows the basic form of a recursive system which is based on uh, uh, the equation which we derived uh, the equation which we talked about this equation this equation or uh, basically all three equations are same you know, I just changed the form of them so it is based on this equation and uh, the block diagram uh, shows the recursive system there is a delay which is represented by z inverse uh, the delay block is shown separately and why is it important because uh, it is providing the previous output for the calculation right it is not possible to calculate uh, the y of n in terms of y of n because it is present uh, present output itself so you cannot con uh, calculate the present output in terms of present output because it is not present there right so uh, that would have been the case if delay block w wouldn't be present over there right so that's why we are uh, putting a uh, delay block over there now uh, what is happening here the equation the first uh, equation this equation y of n is equal to y of n minus 1 plus x of n it is called a difference equation and the corresponding uh, discrete time system we have seen in this figures so this equation can be generalized and written using this formula as well see uh, y of n is equal to minus summation of k is equal to 1 to n a k y of n minus k plus summation of k is equal to 0 to m b k x of n minus k right so uh, we can write it that way so basically when you will compare uh, both of these equations uh, you will find out that uh, um, both of the equations are same we just uh, represented it in uh, in a generalized format with a summation mark right so that's that uh, for the chapter Bas uh, by the way uh, x of n minus k are the inputs and y of n minus k are outputs here uh, just so you know uh, I think you already know that but uh, uh, it's important to know if you have forgotten so uh, basically that's what it for this chapter and uh, uh, for this playlist as well uh, next I'm planning to bring the playlist which will be discussing uh, um, which will be discussing about uh, uh, transformation from uh, uh, spa uh, space uh, space domain to time domain which will uh, which will include uh, Z transform Fourier transform discrete Fourier transform fast Fourier transform all those kind of transforms Laplace transform as well so I'm planning to bring it uh, bring on that if you have any doubts or any query related to this lecture or uh, uh, the previous lectures or even the whole playlist uh, feel free to mention them below in the comment section if you have any feedback related to the videos you can also mention them in the uh, comment section below I will be seeing you next time with a new playlist till then goodbye take care thank you very much for listening